Welcome to Meet the Master, a monthly series by Pilgrim Center of Hope for one and all to encounter Jesus in his words and actions. You can find Meet the Master on our website or your favorite podcast app with a new episode the first Friday of every month. Now, we invite you to Meet Jesus, the Master. Welcome to Meet the Master. I'm Mary Jane Fox. My husband, Deacon Tom, and I are the co-directors of Pilgrim Center of Hope and so much enjoy serving this mission of evangelization that brings hope to many. In this episode of Meet the Master, we will hear about what it means to persevere when the going gets tough. But let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus, Master, we place ourselves before you. We are seeking to learn more about you and discover your goodness, your mercy. Lord, send us the Holy Spirit to guide us. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Have you heard people say, I don't understand a situation, I just give up? Well, whether it be dealing with a work situation, a family relationship, or a project, do we find ourselves thinking those same thoughts? How can we be aware of God's presence throughout the day when things are not going my way or when things are getting pretty tough? Well, we all have to make decisions in life, and when we're faced with decisions about relationships, children, or use of time, jobs, homes, money, holidays, possessions, giving, and so on, there are many things that come to us daily and weekly where we need to make decisions, and we do need help. And how do we get that help? As Christians, we run, of course, to God in prayer, a Heavenly Father. And the, in the Catholic Church, we have the Catechism of the Catholic Church. In paragraph 1731, it really specifically helps us shed some light on the way to discern the choices that we make. And I like to quote from that, 1731. Freedom is the power rooted in reason and will to act or not to act, to do this or that, and so to perform deliberate actions on one's own responsibility. By free will, one shapes one's own life. Human freedom is a force for growth and maturity in truth and goodness. It attains its perfection when directed towards God. Wow, human freedom really attains its perfection when directed toward God. You know, we have that free will to persevere, to not to give up, to fight the fight. We've heard those slogans, right? It sounds right. It sounds good to the ear, but it's hard. It's hard to do. So this is why we turn to the Catechism of the Catholic Church with these insights, the one we just heard, but also to the scriptures. Psalm 32, verse 8, we read, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Now, that's consoling. (laughs) Certainly that's consoling. And it's encouraging that God wants to instruct us and teach us in the way we should go. But how does he do that? Well, he does that, yes, through his word, as we just read one verse of his word. And there are many including the hundreds of promises that God has given us in the New Testament and the Old Testament, but also through, you know, the church. You know, as Catholics, we have so much to help us move forward. So much. You're asking what? what? Well, number one is the grace of God and the blessings we receive as we live as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God. You may be thinking, but why would God present to us situations in which we have to keep going through hard times if he does indeed provide us the graces needed? Well, the modern world would say, this is cruel. No, on the contrary, the modern world misses the point. Our lives as Christians are not all about this world alone. It is living our faith at every moment with hope attempted to live it at every moment with hope. The virtue of perseverance is a very important tool that we as Catholics have to stay, have so that we can stay close to Jesus in times of despair, 
in times of anxiety. The definition of perseverance and comes from the Catholic Dictionary, I like to read that, is to remain in the state of grace until the end of life. To remain in the state of grace until the end of life is living under God's light every day. I mean, we're going to fall. Yes, we're going to make mistakes. We're all sinners. We sin. That's why the church gives us confession for that very purpose, that we, when we give up or we are tempted to give up or we do give up and we say, I just can't. And then we realize days, weeks, months, maybe even years later, I need God. I need hope. The church is there to give us hope. Again, that definition of perseverance is to remain in the state of grace until the end of life. The church teaches that it is impossible without the special help of God to persevere in the state of grace to the end. Let us be thankful for the special help of God, for his grace to help us, to sustain us. We need to choose each day to ask for his grace and to act upon it. To help us along, here are some words of wisdom from St. Anthony Zachariah. He says, Before starting activities, offer Jesus a few words of your choosing. Then during your work, Often lift up your mind to God. You will benefit much, and there will be no determinant to your job. First, watch how anything concerning yourself or others is begun. Direct it first to God with any short prayer with which he may inspire you, mentally or also in prayers that express your thoughts or wishes. End of quote. Now, this... These words of wisdom from St. Anthony Zachariah, Zachariah uh, are indeed very helpful because he is giving us a step-by-step prayer um, to, or you know, guidance to think about you know, to, before we start anything, to offer Jesus a few words from, of our own choosing, in other words, from our heart. Okay, I have this project. Lord, I, I don't know how I'm going to start. I need your help. It could be that simple. But it is from the heart. It, it makes a difference. And then he continues to say, watch how everything or anything concerning yourself or others is begun. Because, you know, once we, when we do this every day, you will see the fruit of, those, of that um, choice that you made in offering this to, uh, to Jesus. And this is possible when we persevere, when we endure obstacles with patience as we implore the help of God's grace. Perseverance is linked to the virtue of fortitude, which comes from the Latin word fortis, meaning strong. And in English, it has always been used primarily to describe strength of mind. So to become strong, to be, to be strong in, in, in our mind and in our, our heart and in our, in our whole being. You know, one of my daily prayers is to ask for wisdom, knowledge, and fortitude. I need that fortitude because I also need the, the wisdom. I need to know how to make decisions or to wisdom to know the difference of how to choose. And, of course, that comes with knowledge, and I need that. I need the fortitude to use, those, to use these two beautiful virtues, wisdom and knowledge, to move forward. So that fortitude helps us to move forward with deep faith, with hope as we implore the wisdom to make decisions or the knowledge in responding to challenges. And this is certainly my daily prayer I need. You know, my husband and I, my husband Deacon Tom and I recently adopted my 74-year-old cousin who has stage 4 lung cancer, a situation least expected. And yet it has been a lesson about perseverance, about patience, fortitude, and, of course, wisdom in caring for its various needs. Plus, it has taught me a lot about myself and how much I need to grow in charity, patience, and in fortitude. So sometimes the things that come up in life that we least expect, um, like in this case, I did not know I was going to be a caregiver to a 74-year-old with stage 4 lung cancer, but it has been a beautiful journey in a way, too, because Obviously, number one, he's family, and I love him. But through that, 
there are times I just grip my teeth and think, ah, you know, what do I do now? Or what, you know, medical, you know, going to these medical doctors and dealing with appointments and seeing him have his good days and bad days because of his lung cancer and the chemo treatments. You know, you at, at the end of the day, when I put my head on my pillow, I think, Lord, you did it. You, you gave me the strength I needed, even through my gritting the teeth, you know, because I, I did. I cried out to him. And I can see, I can observe the grace he's given my husband, Tom, and I to care for my cousin. And you know what's so beautiful? My cousin is seeing the, uh, seeing, I, I use the word seeing. He's, he's experiencing, he's observing the, um, our care because previously he did not have this care. He was living with some friends that were not caring for him and his health was deteriorating. And so now there's a change in his life. So while we're gritting our teeth, he's smiling (laughs) because he's receiving care and we're like, we're learning. But that fortitude, that perseverance is helping us to continue to move forward. You know, perhaps some of us may have a similar situation and can and it can become a source of grace for us to learn. It can be a, a time to be encouraged to grow in the faith. The scripture should give us hope to persevere, to remain strong, as we read in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, quote, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Yes, put that on my refrigerator door and mirror, right? (laughs) We need to see that every day. Let me repeat that. It's so beautiful. Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. If we don't give up. It's key. It is part of God's plan for us to have a life of joy and happiness God extends his mercy and love to the world through those who believe in him and that means and, and that means a lot to all of us, right? We can make a difference in situations by choosing to pray, to implore God's grace, and yes, remain strong, to grow in that virtue of fortitude. God desires our sanctification, which is a consequence of an intimate relationship with him, leading us to greatest possibility of happiness in this life and for all eternity. God wants us to be happy. He longs for us to be at peace and to have joy in the midst of what we go through in everyday life. I mean, he sent his son Jesus to endure his passion and a horrific death on the cross. And then he resurrected and when he appears to the apostles after his resurrection, before he ascended to heaven, he appeared with his wounds marked in his wrist, his side, and his feet from those nails that crucified him through the cross. Why would he show his wounds? You know, it's a sign of, of courage for us to have courage, to keep going, to persevere, to, to, in a way, as some spiritual writers have invited us to contemplate deeply, to enter into the wounds of Christ at those times that we, don't, we want to give up. We, we can run, run in, to him and we place ourselves in, in the wounds of Christ. Lord, you know what it means to hurt. You know what it means to be betrayed, to suffer, to... You know, the Lord never gave up, of course, but he had emotions, and certainly we have them. So this is where God's grace is very strong, and we need God's grace. There's so much to be said here. You know, um, and many saints have written about this virtue of perseverance, the virtue of fortitude. And when I read the lives of the saints, it gives me great uh consolation and direction and how I can continue in, in the situations that I can relate to with their situation in their life, whether, have, whether they lived 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, or even 
just recent times as modern day saints. We know many mo- modern day saints that can give us some. They can become really good role models. You know, they they made it. They made it to heaven. They became saints. They did not give up. So yes, in the beginning, I said the church. Uh, we have as Catholics, we have so much to help us uh, continue, and the church is there to walk with us. Mother Church is, uh, is there to, to walk with us and to provide the sacraments, the resources, the direction, the history, the sacred art to contemplate and to take our mind off what may be that refreshing moment that we need. So yes, uh, it, it is possible to continue to persevere and to not give up. Friends, we have come to the close of this episode of Meet the Master. Thank you for joining me. Let me know what you thought of this episode of Meet the Master. Contact us at pilgrimcenterofhope.org, pilgrimcenterofhope.org. Let us, I'd like to close with a prayer written by St. Thomas Aquinas, who himself persevered through trials, and allow his words to be a part of your daily prayer. Join me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant me, O Lord, my God, a mind to know you, a heart to seek you, wisdom to find you, conduct pleasing to you, faithful perseverance in waiting for you, and a hope of finally embracing you. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening to this month's Meet the Master. We are so grateful to our sponsors who made this podcast possible. Would you like to help others meet the Master? Direct them to listen to the podcast on the Pilgrim Center of Hope website or on apps like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. And if you listen using an app, please take a few seconds to give the podcast a positive rating. Your simple action will signal to the app that Meet the Master should be recommended to people who are browsing for a new podcast to listen to. As we say at Pilgrim Center of Hope, every little bit helps. Thanks for helping us spread the word about Meet the Master.